Have you ever waited a long time for something? I mean, a really long time. Like a 15-year-old waiting for the car keys. (laughs) A little bit more than that here, years and years. Perhaps for you it's retirement. Uh, Or pay off some of those nagging cards. Or, if you're young, your little sister to get done with her turn with your toy. What about if it doesn't come until the end of your life? See, we've got to get into the idea of who Simeon was. And so... We take a look. I, I don't have time to deal with Anna. I'm just going to see how Simeon c- celebrated seeing the Savior. A song of joy comes over him. And because of his faith, he was able to be at peace. And we have peace as well. Through that, same child. It's the peace of God through the baby born to Mary. It's not popular to say that we're sinners at war with God, but it's true. Even those of us that have been in the church for more than a couple of days, we still like our own ideas uh, about certain things and when we discover that there's a better way to do it in God's word, we either go, oh, or I'm not sure I want to do that. And so we still kind of at war. We desperately need that peace that this baby brings. And God promised back in Isaiah's day that he would bring comfort to his people and that the coming of the Prince of Peace would bring that, and Simeon knew those passages and waited longingly for this. And he had a special word of promise from the Holy Spirit that he would have that fulfillment. He would literally see it. The extra blessing was that he got to hold it in his arms. And Like Simeon, we too can have that peace by means of the gospel of peace that is preached. The Prince of Peace coming to us in the Lord's Supper. He wants to be a part of our lives. That faith that we have in our lives that the Holy Spirit told Simeon the Savior's coming, but he creates faith in our hearts, and so we too can see the salvation in Christ, that babe of Mary. I'm trying to stay in the Christmas spirit here. The world is really tor- torn it apart. Um, you know, but as, as Simeon, and, and I'm trying to use those kind of terms, that as Simeon held him in his hands, we can hold similarly the Lord in our hands as we come forward for his supper. We can hold him in our hands and in our hearts, in our bodies. We can sing the song that Simeon sang that many of us grew up, oh well, many of you grew up on. I grew up, oh man, so different. <laughs> but it's, it's not only a piece for us, It's a peace for our future. It's not just today, but it is today. We have peace for every day because Christ, the babe of the manger, came and went to the cross and paid the full price for you and for me for the condition of sin and all of the sins we commit by doing what we shouldn't and not doing what we should. The sins of omission as well. And in that babe, like Simeon, we see the salvation of God. 
and it's for all people. It's very interesting that Simeon includes the Gentiles in this song that he sings. It would be a light to the Gentiles everywhere. May that be true because we carry on that work of acknowledging the Savior and bringing that light to our community. Now, one of the things that we need to note a little bit about, or several things we need to note about Simeon, is that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Um, you know, similar to Old Testament prophets, it's in the same kind of vein. The Holy Spirit would come upon them and uh, to uh, accomplish particular tasks. And in this day, it's Simeon. He nudges Simeon. Simeon is attuned to the voice of the Spirit. He goes into the temple courts. It may not have been his day to, you know, be the priest of the day, so to speak, or have any particular assigned duties. They would rotate that through the tribe of Levi. And, uh, you know, but he was there at the temple because he loved the temple. And so he came moved by the Spirit. Now he offers praise to God. If you have the King James in your head, it's bless. He blessed God, meaning to be, let me say this carefully, commendatory. It's a word we don't often hear. Speak well of, praise, extol. You know, how sometimes we think we humans how can we bless God I mean God is the source of all good no we're acknowledging that he's the source that's how we bless him by the way we speak by the way we live our lives by the way we spend our time by the way we spend our money by the way that we talk to other people that's how we bless him and he's he's Almost evangelizing here, if you will. He's, he's, if you've ever just witnessed an answer to prayer, you know something of the joy that Simeon feels welling up inside him that the Spirit is answering that prayer. And in this song of praise, the child Jesus is equated with your salvation. It's not accidental that his name in Hebrew, Yeshua, or we would say Joshua, common name in those days, means literally salvation. There were a lot of boys that were named Joshua in Jesus' day because the Jews were so looking forward to the salvation that God would send. Everybody wanted that Savior to be their son. So Simeon looks on this name, uh, child, and, and his name is salvation. I, my eyes have seen your salvation. It's so fitting. My eyes have seen your Joshua. And he sees that as extending to all people. And then he says something very interesting, something kind of ominous to Mary. That, the Holy, that a sword will pierce her soul. There will be pain and grief in her life that she will see her son rejected by the nation's leaders and crucified. But one thing that we have to remember and one thing that helps us with this whole Christmas season and especially Simeon and Anna is that we sometimes in our Americanization of the church, we forget that Jesus was born into a Jewish family, very Jewish family, one that kept all the Jewish laws blamelessly. We can't make the mistake as we try to make Jesus appeal to everybody that we would take him away from his cultural context. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law 
and without faith in Christ, we are under the law. And so this idea of bringing Jesus to the temple so that he would be presented, be circumcised, that his name would be given. This is the eighth day, the name that the angel had given before he had been conceived. Now, Bethlehem is only about six miles south of Jerusalem, and so they come to the temple for this, and they, in their poverty, can only afford the pigeons or the doves, two of them, as the sacrifice. And it wasn't about that. It was about their faithfulness, because... In the law of Moses, it said every firstborn must be consecrated to the Lord. They are under the law. They are living under the law. And so we also see the connection. The firstborn of Israel are passed over, but the firstborn of Egypt are all killed in the tenth plague. There's this thing about the law, this sacrifice that is made for us. Now, Simeon's name means hearing in Hebrew, and it's good for us. He's righteous, he's just, he's devout, he goes to church um, on a regular basis, and maybe more often he's probably one of those people you know, that when the church doors are open, you'd have to throw rocks at them to keep them away. You know, every church has one or two or five of those people, you know, that they're always there, you know. And, and you're glad of it, you know. You can always count. It doesn't matter, you know, what the circumstances might be. They are always there. They're usually the first ones. They have a key. They unlock everything. They make sure the lights are on and everything's ready. Well, all of that's very nice and academic. What can we learn from this? I would suggest, since um, some of my sermons are pointless, I now have seven points. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. But we have to remember, number one, that Jesus was raised in the context of strict observance to the law, even though he's the one that would transcend the law. How is that helpful to us? Sometimes we are placed in restrictive situations in our lives, and we have to live out our lives in service to him. and We don't feel all that free to do it. And yet God blesses us in being faithful. Number two, moving right along, Mary and Joseph provide a devout home in which Christ is raised. And in that sense, to set the example to parents everywhere. Number three, moving right along, Jesus is presented to the Lord and consecrated by his parents while he's a baby. This is not this, well, when they grow up, they'll get to choose. No, parents choose. Later, they can do what they want to do, but raising them, getting them to understand that there is some things uh, that we believe and that, that they should be aware of at the very least, things that their parents trust. Number four, God has faithful people, Simeon and Anna, who played no great role on the stage of the Bible history, but they've got some important bit parts. They're sensitive to God's voice, and when they're called upon, when the time is right, they step forward. We might identify with that, that we feel like, okay, I just put a dent in the pew cushion, and that's all I do. But that's not true. God's got a part for you. You may not get to see it right away. You may not even see it until after it's gone by. That's why he's the God of his story that we smoosh together and call history. Sometimes it's only in looking back that we see God 
used us. There is also a very interesting fifth point. The Holy Spirit can speak to us. Show us things that others don't know, don't understand. He promised Simeon he would see the Messiah before he would physically die. But we're unlikely to hear God's voice like that unless we prepare ourselves by living in his grace, in his righteousness, in his service. Simeon and Anna were also people full of praise. That's a worthy thing to do. And Jesus is coming offers that, number seven, Jesus is coming offers hope, light, and salvation to all people. Not just to his special people, but to all people. And we're, we're really convinced of that. We won't be shy about speaking the difference that he has made in our lives to other people. You know, in the world, most of Christmas is gone. We still got our trees and stars, and I love it. But they'll be gone soon. I noticed um, that some people have already put their trees on the curb. You know, some places, the boxes in the trash. Boy, the Friday is trash, one of the trash days in my neighborhood. And there were bags and bags and bags of wrapping paper because there are kids and kids all over our, my neighborhood. <laughs> wow. Um, and listening, you know, to the radio, you don't hear the songs played anymore. You know, the holiday greeting commercials are now Happy New Year commercials. That's in the world, but for the people of God, this has ongoing significance, and it's worth waiting for. That peace that we have with God, that peace that passes all understanding, that peace of knowing our future is secure because Christ paid for it, and our sins are forgiven that we're okay with God. We have a glorious future, both here and there, that he is with us, with his spirit guiding us for our lives, and that we've got somewhere to go for answers, someone to trust with the desires of our heart. To be like Simeon and Anna is a good thing. And then to act when God calls. May he have the glory for that. Amen.